history of disempowerment. <clears throat> In the essence statement from the Root Tantras, it says, if you do not explain the history of its origin, people will commit the fault of not believing in the profoundly secret true teaching. Thus, a brief account will be given. In the western pure land of Devachan, Avalokiteshvara requested the lord of the family Amitabha to grant him the Guya Samaja Tantra. After the Dakinis had written its words with melted lapis lazuli on a golden scroll, they placed it into a chest made of five precious substances, gold, silver, turquoise, coral, and pearl, and hid it at Mount 
um, Tale Wangkok. Avalokiteshvara transmitted the teachings to Padmasambhava, who converted the symbolic script of the Dakinis into the script of Dhanakosha. It was later translated into Tibetan. When Padmasambhava came to Tibet, he subdued all the gods and spirits and constructed hundreds of temples. He visited the most important holy places. All the teachings of the sutras and tantras were translated into Tibetan. In particular, the vast cycle of the great compassionate one, who is a Maja Tantras, was translated in Arya Palo Ling by Lotsawa Chugyang and others. Some were translated by Padmasambhava himself. With the help of the mountain god of Karim, the golden scroll was then hidden at Namke Chendak. And trusting these teachings with a seal of secrecy to the mountain god um, Shu Karim, the nine-headed black Nagas devil, the protecting Mamo of the secret mantra, and the Samaya-bound protector Vajrasadu, Padmasambhava prayed. In future times, before this world comes to an end, may a karmically destined being encounter this, um, their predestined deity, the great compassionate one, Avalokiteshvara. Later, at the right time, Langdo Lotsawa took birth as Radnalingba, who revealed this dharma in public and everyone gained confidence. The mountain god of Karim actually came to the assembled crowd and pointed to the dharma site. The place was pervaded with the scent of saffron and five rainbows resembling silken cloths. Um, according to the prophecy of the Dakini Ekachati, when the first vase consecration was performed in the region of Penn, the Great Compassionate One appeared directly on top of the vase. The blessing pills multiplied and hovered in space. The Dharma empowerment was given to about 60 to 70,000 people, and the blessing pills were distributed. A limitless rain of flowers, the smallest as large as wild roses, showered down uninterruptedly from sunrise <coughs> until midday. Lord Karma Chudak Yatsum, Dupak Yalwang Chujem, and the great Neldong also received the empowerment and transmission with great devotion. The 30 days consecration Drukchen retreats, each for seven days, performed by Ratna Lingba, <coughs> did not meet with any obstacles and was accompanied by rainbows and radiating light rays. Numerous magnificent signs manifested. All directions were filled with the scent of saffron, showers of flowers from the sky and the gathering beheld the face of the great compassionate one. And then the teachings spread in all directions. Um, <coughs> and then, um, um, Ratna Lingba, Tsewang Dagba, Shakya Dashim, Kadrung Sonam Dashi, Tsechok Bima, Lama Bima Wangchuk, the great mantra holder Wangchuk Yalbo, the Vidyadara Karma Donyu, and Raga Asya all possess the complete instructions and transmissions. The lineage of the Dorma empowerment is Tsewang Dagba, Ngawang Dagba, Gunga Dagba, Gunga Denzin, Orgyan Denzin, Derzin Yingbo, and Raga Asya. The special transmission lineages Ratna Lingba, Mingyo Dorje, and Raga Asya. The benefits of receiving this empowerment are as follows. The Guya Samaja Tantra says, in accordance with words spoken by the Buddha Amitabha and Padma Sambhava, fortunate great followers will continue to practice the seven syllables. The enlightened body, speech, mind, qualities, and activities of the Buddhas of the three times are perfectly complete within the seven syllables. Receiving the empowerment is an inconceivable merit. If the great billionfold universe could be divided into pieces the size as sesame seeds, the all-knowing Buddhas could determine their number. But they could not determine the extent of virtue of the seven syllables. The Buddhas could count the merit from saving the life of all beings in the universe. But how could they express the virtue of reciting the seven syllables only a single time? One could calculate the virtue of establishing all sentient beings of the three worlds without exception in the ground of Buddhahood. 
but one could not calculate the virtue of reciting the seven syllables only once. One could calculate the merit of making offerings to all the Buddha's prevailing space, but one could not calculate the virtue of reciting the seven syllables mm. only once. Even if the body of ripened karma is created, mm. one who has obtained the empowerment and transmission of the seven syllables will purify the mm. ten non-virtuous actions and five heinous deeds without interval at this very time. Because the heart essence that appears to your mind is the great compassionate one, obstacles will be dispelled and beings tamed. Whenever one sees, hears, thinks of or comes into contact, meditates, recites, writes his name or holds his teachings, will be endowed with virtue and wherever um, they are born, they will never separate from Avalokiteshvara. Um, in the extensive, um, if, the ex if the extensive empowerment is not performed and only the middling dharma empowerment or the concise empowerment um, given, it will nevertheless constitute a perfectly complete empowerment. The four empowerments purify one's body, speech and mind. They ripen the mind stream and cause the wisdom beings to enter one's mind. The tantra that embodies the four rivers of empowerment says, to summarize the essence of the empowerment, the empowerment ripens and purifies the mind. It causes the wisdom beings to enter one's mind and leads to the attainment of the 13 Vajra grounds as a result. Thus you should experience maturation. Thus it is profound and its benefits are measureless. It is the destined day team of the snowy land of Tibet and belongs to the unsurpassed <coughs> mantra of secret mantra. <coughs> It is the heart essence of Padmasambhava, of the 25 secret dharmas, of the Dakinis. This is the most supreme one. It is a special buried, a special buried dharma of Tibet. This <coughs> 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 で、那個是中央美國的,也就是,什麼大麥吧,這個老闆的東西都開始,這個大麥,你看到的。你你通通的,你通,你通的,你通的,你通的,你通的,你通的,你通的,你通的,你通的,你通的,你通的,你通的,你通
So uh, this morning we already explained some historical um, background and account and also this now was the story of the empowerment. And so um, to, to clarify uh, what kind of teachings they are, in the secret mantra in the Vajrayana we have uh, two types, the, um, the gamma, the actual like, words, and then we have dharmas or treasures. And so the, the, the various gamma texts were texts that were translated by the various Lotsavas, the translators who really endured many hardships to translate those texts. And then these texts were transmitted. And so then there is the, uh, the Dharma um, lineage, which are uh, like treasures. And these are, uh, also have very special qualities. So some of you maybe are not, not sure what a Dharma actually is. So the, um, the Dharma um, itself was um, um, in its beginning written by the, um, uh, in the symbolic script of the Dakinis. And so the symbolic script of the Dakinis, um, that, which is the Dharma, is not any language that we have. It is not Sanskrit or any of those languages. Mm -hmm. It is um, a language that, that nobody actually knows. It's, it's not a, really a language. It's a symbolic script um, that is very um, brief. So it was Yeshe Tsogyal who wrote these, um, this Dharma in the symbolic Dakini script. And very few of these Dakini um, symbols, this script, would represent a whole volume, a whole book of teachings. So the entire um, volume of these teachings is contained in these symbolic um, syllables that were then um, deciphered by the Dertun, by the discoverer. And actually, um, it was said that this, this Dertun, this treasury discoverer, shouldn't be somebody that is very intellectual and has much learning, mm -hmm. um, because um, then um, if they have a lot of um, learning and they are scholars, then that uh, the blessings of the Dharma would not be so great. So actually it was found by those who uh, didn't have um, these qualities of scholarship. And so, <clears throat> and so then, however, after it was um, translated into our languages, even when the scholars then um, read and really investigate, examine this text, they also couldn't find any mistakes there. So they are a very profound. So that's a special quality of a, a dharma. And so these um, dharmas <coughs> that were revealed um, by Guru Rinpoche, Padma Sambhava, um, are endowed with many blessings. And in order for these blessings not to decline, he hid them as a hidden treasure, a dharma. And he would then tell his disciples that in the future, you will again, in a future birth, you will encounter these teachings, you will reveal those teachings, and then you should benefit beings with these teachings. For example, um, there is the Drikung Kagi Poa, the great uh, Poa, that also is a Dharma, and it is well known to be endowed with many blessings. And so how did that come about? Um, also, it came from Guru Rinpoche at the time of the, the King Chisung Detsen. And the King Chisung Detsen had a minister, Nima, who encountered difficulties. And uh, so in response to uh, the minister Nima's difficulties, the um, Guru Rinpoche then uh, gave the instructions of Poam. And he said that in the future, you will be born as someone holding the name Nima, and you will reveal these teachings as a, a dharma, you will discover them again, mm -hmm. and at that time you should benefit beings with this teaching. And according to the prophecy, in the future, he, many years later, he took birth at the Daklagambo Hills um, as a person, uh, a master called an Nida Sangye, so which is Nida also is a Nima, and um, he then um, transmitted the the, 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 the Jikung Kagyu great Poa teachings. Uh, so many of you have probably heard about the, this, this great Jikung Kagyu Poa teachings. 
And so these dharmas, they come um, originally from Guru Rinpoche and they were taught by Guru Rinpoche and, and written down by the Rakini Yeshe Tsogyal. And then also they, these, these dharmas, these treasures, were sealed with an aspiration prayer and the aspiration prayer um, carry great power. Um, so this is the special quality of those dharmas that I wanted to introduce you to. Most of you probably know about that. Maybe some of you wonder what a dharma is. And so um, the special quality of those dharmas in brief is that they are written in uh, this symbolic Dakini script. <laughs> で、たぶん、たぶん、たぶん、たぶん、たぶん、たぶん、たぶん、たぶん、たぶん、たぶん、たぶん、たぶん、たぶん、たぶん、たぶん、たぶん、たぶん、たぶん、たぶん、たぶ
So when we come to the empowerment, and most of you are um, senior disciples and familiar with the empowerment, but just in brief, um, the empowerment, um, so, um, the difference between the, the sutras and the tantras is the empowerment. So in the sutras, there is no empowerment. When we follow the sutra path, then we slowly eliminate self-grasping, by cultivating an altruistic mind, by cultivating bodhicitta, love throughout many lifetimes and practices according to the 37 bodhisattva practices, such as practicing the six paramitas and developing bodhicitta. And then throughout um, several si lifetimes, one attains enlightenment if one follows this path of the sutras. And then there's those who have trained and practiced in previous lives and therefore possess some great wisdom in this life. And to them, there is a way, um, a swift path to attain enlightenment in a single lifetime, in a single body. And that is the path of the Vajrayana, the secret mantra. And the empowerment um, opens the doors to the Vajrayana. So those intelligent ones endowed with wisdom, they are introduced during the empowerment to the nature, the actual nature of their body and their minds. And uh, some might immediately recognize um, their true nature, what, uh, what, they, what was always with them. It is like they um, take a clear look into a mirror and see their face clearly. Um, before we have said, Marpo Lotsava said, when you realize the nature of your body, it is um, indivisible from the form of the deity, the body of the deity. So if you really understand the qualities of the Yidam deity, you understand that um, you can accomplish the qualities of the deity. It is like you understand the quality of ice and that when it melts, it becomes one with the ocean. There is no doubt in some people's mind. They can immediately understand that. And whenever, um, whatever teachings they hear of secret mantra, they will understand um, and they will not have any dualistic grasping at self and others. And so this is in the, um, in the, in the highest, in the ideal case, when they receive empowerment, this is the understanding they, they will get. And so for the meaning of the empowerment, in, in brief, um, Although there are countless hundreds of empowerments, the purpose, the meaning of the empowerment is to um, empower yourself or gain some kind of um, freedom, some kind of power. And that is the, the power, the freedom to uh, create happiness and to eliminate suffering. And this is what um, all beings need in this world, want in this world. So, for example, we have some freedom, we live in a free or independent country and in such an independent country there is some happiness but people do not really have the freedom um, over their own happiness and suffering still. And so um, those with wisdom and who understand the Dharma 
will see this worldly view as mistaken because uh, they see that they cannot they cannot find any true freedom there and because in a worldly um, system in a worldly life um, we are preoccupied with the results and so uh, when we try to get the result or like, eliminate the result we cannot find a real freedom so for example in a worldly sense we we try to find happiness by you know, working and studying and getting rich and so on we make every effort um, but no matter how hard we try we will accomplish some of our intentions and others we will not accomplish and um, so um, there's some people who have the same learning are from the same um, um, upbringing and still they do not accomplish the same <coughs> things and that is because they neglect the, um, the cause there's actually a cause and that is what um, Buddhism explains um, when it explains karma cause and effect when we understand the cause we can and you can find freedom by understanding or creating the right causes not the results so it is just like when you want to grow a flower from a seed if you want a certain flower to grow you must be unmistaken at the choice of the seed so if you are clear what kind of seed that is then the result of the flower will be unmistaken and so similarly the cause that will grow into happiness is bodhicitta and so that is what we are introduced to in the buddhist path from the time we receive the bodhisattva vows until we attain enlightenment we are introduced to the causes that we need to create from lifetime to lifetime and if we create those causes then temporarily in, um, in we will temporarily in the future we will be we will experience the happiness of the higher realms and ultimately that cause will lead to enlightenment we'll, we will naturally obtain these results if we take um, if we create the right causes so the freedom or the independence we create we create on the basis of the causes not the results and so there's some, some other people who think that um, this these causes and this accomplishment is very distant it is hard to understand so some people with um, stronger self-grasping have many doubts in, the, in their mind. And so, however, we can also see how it really functions in this world. There, there are some countries, for example, where there's constant wars and people their entire life, um, they spend in war and they, they're never free from that. And then there's others who, although they are surrounded by war, they never actually experience the suffering of war. Um, so even um, in a worldly sense, we can see um, how, um, how different things ripen. And so <coughs> um, if we, <coughs> um, if we, um, if we create the, um, the causes, if we try to get um, um, our freedom by creating the causes, then we will not be mistaken. And so the cause to create, to achieve happiness, is only to cultivate love and compassion and patience to protect this love and compassion and if you have these qualities then you have you have found the cause that that is it and so secret mantra vajrayana provides us with skillful methods to create those causes that require the least difficulty and so in the um, during the empowerment of the secret mantra we are introduced how to how we can transform our ordinary body speech and mind into the pure enlightened body speech and mind of the day team and how we can attain freedom by transforming our self grasping into our mind of bodhicitta and so during the empowerment we are introduced that um, to, with our body we attain freedom by visualizing the creation stage the, the, the day team with our speech, we attain freedom by reciting the mantra, and the mind gives rise to bodhicitta. And in this way, uh, transforming body, speech, and mind, we attain the state of the Buddha's three kayas. And so there are four empowerments, and actually there are four kayas um, that we are introduced to during the four empowerments. So first there are three kayas, the body and the form, is the Nirmanakaya, the speech, the Sambhogakaya, and the mind, the Dharmakaya. 
So what is the mind, the Dharmakaya? Um, so from a, an ordinary perspective, when uh, we, um, and there is still um, concepts and effort in our mind, then there is a distinction between Buddhas and sentient beings. But uh, when we engage in practice and self-grasping diminishes and bodhicitta arises, one sees that self and others do not exist. There is, um, there is non-duality. So when one sees non-duality, that is the dharmakaya mind. The dharmakaya mind is emptiness. And it is to understand that, uh, understand non-duality. And so then the fourth kaya, the, the essence kaya or this vabhavika kaya, is when you realize that that is actually my own mind. And these qualities are actually inseparable, indivisible from my own mind. <coughs> so the Svabhavika Kaya is accomplished when you, when you clearly um, um, come back to your own mind and recognize your own true nature with clarity. And you recognize that the three Kayas are complete within your own mind. Also when we, we practice Mahamudra, it is that we practice Mahamudra, um, we attain this um, state of um, non-meditation when, when we reach a state where we don't require meditation. So then we realize that that is a state where we realize that the three kayas are complete within our own mind. And that realization is the fourth kaya, the Svabhavika kaya or the essence kaya. When you decide, you resolve, um, um, the three kayas, all this is my own mind. And so this is what we are introduced to when we receive the four um, empowerments. That is the meaning of the empowerment or the, the, the ultimate meaning of the empowerment. ちょっと何ばらさんばらワンでどワンでかれでちょっと。ばばちょっとでどこせわんでばばとまちんぼこよでせわんで。ワンでらてねあのいざこそばなごわんで。おおてたのさんちょっとにあんとらだ。ちょ
um, to, to realize, to recognize the actual um, natural state of the mind, that is the ultimate empowerment, the actual empowerment. And so when we then engage in Vajrayana practice, we finally realize the ultimate truth, that is to realize um, non-duality, that self and others are indivisible. It is a non-dual primordial wisdom. And when you realize that, then you have obtained the actual, the ultimate empowerment. And then you have attained the, the royal seat, the kingdom of the Dharmakaya for your own purpose. And for the purpose of others, you manifest the Sambhogakayas and Nirmanakayas. And your activities will become equal to all the Buddhas. So um, the, this, this is how the uh, Milarepa explains the outer the inner and the, and the actual empowerment. So in, in brief, um, all the hundreds of um, empowerments, the many empowerments that exist are really included within that. So, Um, also once Gijit uh, Sogyal asked Guru Rinpoche, um, there are so many deities, many wisdom gods, where do they all come from, where do they arise from? And Guru Rinpoche replied, they all arise from Bodhicitta. <laughs> And so then, where do the, the demons arise from? And they arise from self-grasping. So primordially, gods and demons do not exist um, inherently. There are, um, on the primordial basis, there are no gods and no demons. They are the same. But if you give rise to self-grasping and then um, ha hatred and jealousy, then that is a demon. You become a demon. And if that is purified and you give rise to love and compassion, then you become a deity. But to begin with, there is no actual distinction between gods and demons. In reality, they do both do not exist. So whether or not you become a god or demon is up to you. If you give rise to um, much many thoughts of hatred and jealousy, then it is possible that you will become a demon. If you give rise to bodhicitta, then just naturally, in this very moment, you are a deity. Um, right now, when you give rise to bodhicitta, um, it will reflect in your conduct. You will be gentle and kind and patient and help others and so on. So bodhicitta is the root of the empowerment.
So, um, the, the root of suffering of all sentient beings, limitless as space, is self-grasping. And no matter how many sentient beings there may be in this billion fourth universe, the, self, the self-grasping of all those beings and the self-grasping of one person, of oneself, is the same. So now mentally gather your own self-grasping and the self-grasping of all those sentient beings um, that exist in the universe and um, think that you're offering up this um, self-grasping in order to eliminate self-grasping um, in a form of a mandala. So we are offering up this um, um, our self-grasping to the Buddhas abiding in space and think that um, in return the Buddhas then shower down um, their love and their compassion, um, just as um, the snowflakes fell um, yesterday, um, covering um, everybody, melting into everybody. So think that in this way, then the self-grasping of all beings is diminished. So we will recite the mandala offering in English. The ground is sprinkled with scented water and strewn with flowers. It is adorned with Meru, the supreme mountain, the four continents, and the sun and moon. As a Buddha field, I offer it. May all sentient beings attain the happiness of the Buddha fields. To the lamas who possess the three kayas, I offer the outer, inner, and secret offerings with my body, wealth, and all that is visible. Please grant me the supreme realization, enlightenment. Om Guru Deva Dakini Ratna Mandala Pratishtha So then think that in the space before you um, is the, um, the principal deity, the great compassionate one, Avalokiteshvara, surrounded by all the Buddhas of the three times, the three jewels and the three roots, scattering like clouds in space. And think that I am receiving this empowerment together with all sentient beings in the three realms of samsara. I think that when you repeat the supplications, I um, I represent um, all sentient beings as I supplicate. So these supplications are very important. So we will repeat them in first in Tibetan and then in English. Home. 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 Yeah. 
Precious Supreme Guru, Precious Supreme Guru of, secret mantra, of Secret Mantra, Self Nature, self -nature of, the great secret, of the Great Secret, Empowerment, empowerment having, purified having Purified the Obscurations, the obscurations of, body, and mind, of body, and mind, of Body, Speech and Mind, of Us Fortunate, of us fortunate Dharma, Brothers Brothers and sisters, Dharma Brothers and Sisters, Protector. Please grant, us Please grant us the highest wisdom, the highest wisdom of the four empowerments. So then once we have entered the, the path of Buddhism, then um, in the beginning, it, we first um, begin this path by taking refuge. And so then once we have taken refuge, then we need to cultivate the right motivation. So what kind of motivation is that? It is the motivation to, to benefit all sentient beings. So that is the motivation, the intention that we should bring with us. So the, um, the refuge and the motivation, therefore, are, are very precious, very important, and this is what we will repeat next. Namo, Sawa, Sentang, Quinchosan, Yapji, Tamba, Tamjela, Deme, Attaining enlightenment, attaining enlightenment with respectful three doors, I take refuge in the three roots and three jewels and all the sacred sources of refuge. I confess all negative deeds such as the ten non virtuous actions. I give rise to, give rise to the, bodhicitta the bodhicitta of aspiration, of aspiration and, will and will engage my body, speech and mind, body, speech, and mind to, bring to bring about the benefit and happiness, benefit and happiness of beings. Of beings. Mm -hmm. Mm Thirty 
특히 판소의 중화에서 바꿔야지. 이런 띠가 마다바디, 영어부 중화에서 띠가 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 So <coughs> then the, um, so that the, the text then explains the, the Samaya, the Samaya of the three secrets of the secret mantra. And so we um, we realize that um, ultimately all sentient beings are primordially pure, and so we realize non-duality. But at the same time, while we realize non-duality, we um, continuously have a mind of love and compassion for all those who still grasp at that duality. And so, when an affliction arises. Um, then um, we um, we practice um, compassion and um, and and patience. So um, the three um, secrets is to the samaya of the three secrets. That is to um, recognize that ultimately the body, speech, and mind of all sentient beings is primordially pure. Um, it is only temporarily impure due to the fault of affliction. And so knowing that, it is necessary that we practice patience when we see that. So in, in essence, the Samaya of the Three Secrets means to remain inseparable always from this, this union of wisdom and compassion. And if that is always present, then just naturally whatever you do with your body and your speech will become a, a pure conduct. So the Samaya ultimately is to sustain love and compassion and mindfulness awareness and um, if these are lacking if these qualities are lacking even if you enter the vajrayana path it is of not much benefit and also if you do not enter the vajrayana path if you anybody who fails to cultivate bodhicitta um, they will continue to wander in samsara such as in the hell realms Gong Che, Lama, Gumbo Che, Dodji, Rinto, La Sopa, Dakja, Nevar, Jerbati, Katang, Tangre, Mandati, Turji, Dropper, Dakjato, Gurdi, Chamber, Zongas, English Guru, Great Protector, Supreme Vajra family, and the rest. Please heed me. We will take great care so as not to stray from your instruction and Samaya. We will practice prudently and with great joy. With your kindness, please accept us. Mm-hmm. 
Ben sen niye mi başladın? Allah çok cildi niye mi başladı? Çünkü işi var değil mi öyle? Her şeyi de niye mi başladı? Cildi ol bolları. Sey bak dolayısıyla işi var sandığı öyle. Rıza'nın sandığı öyle. Nandı sey bu işi de zonsuna. Çünkü mon adı işi var cildi ol öyle. Rıza'nın rıza'nın pompa cildi işi de tapa çarpı öyle. Yani cildi var yok nandı dolayısıyla cildi zonsuna. Dolayısıyla zonsuz ama cildi. Non sempre do che è zonge, sempre do che è carri, sempre do che è molto decimera, do che è tanto, do che è tanto, sempre do che è tanto, 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 do che è tanto. Now, so then, it says if you, um, you should keep the, the Samayam, And there's a Maya, you should keep the Samaya of holding the Vajra. Um, so that is the outer form, the outer form of the Samaya is the symbol of the Vajra. <coughs> um, but it represents that within your mind you should sustain mindfulness and heedfulness. And that means that when afflictions arise, such as anger or jealousy, that you recognize that is an affliction. And then you sustain the one, you look at the one, and you recognize the one who has recognized that affliction. And by sustaining awareness in this way, the affliction must become liberated. So the, the outer symbol is the, is the Vajra, and also it represents the inner quality of the five wisdoms, or the five um, Dhyani Buddhas, Yabhyum. And that is because when you sustain mindfulness, then the five, wis uh, the five afflictions will transform into the five wisdoms. And your aggregates and sources and elements will become purified. You purify your body, speech, and mind. So um, when, um, uh, when you hold the Samayam, um, the instruction is you hold the, hold the Vajra, also hold the Vajra of the mind from within. <coughs> And the Vajra of the mind also refers to the Buddha nature that is beyond arising of birth and death, arising and cessation. So it has the nature of Vajra Dara. You yourself have the nature of Vajra Dara because you have a mind. And um, you should recognize this mind. And having recognized the mind, you should remain within it, within this recognition without distraction. ปาเซปาเซบอร์จีบอร์จีปาปอมทาร์ปาปอมทาร์ปามลาปามลามาราคีมาราคีอะไรอยู่สมาร์ดิ come il cerano non mi rende il nome di partire come ha detto il nome di partire se per il nome dei giri di oggi ha detto il nome di partire 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 ทัศน์ทัศน์ทัศน์ทัศน์ทัศน์ทัศน์ทัศน์ทัศน์ทัศน์ทัศน์ทัศน์ทัศน์ทัศน์ทัศน์ทัศน์ทัศน์ทัศ
So what we have just repeated, and I don't have that in English, um, but um, we just repeated this, so the, um, uh, the words of Samayam, and we are, we are taking this oath of um, keeping this Samayam, and so um, we will um, always remember the words of the Guru. So that is why we always say when we think of the Guru, it is very beneficial, because that is actually, what is really beneficial is when we think of the words, the instructions of the Guru. Mm. And so the words of the Guru are to not be distracted. So um, sustain mindfulness. And that mindfulness is indivisible from the Guru. And so, um, so what we just repeated is that if I do not sustain mindfulness, so the essence, the meaning of that is, if I do not sustain mindfulness, then the Samaya will degenerate and I will go to, to hell. So I take the oath of sustaining mindfulness. And so um, that means that when, when you're mindful, you will not accumulate karma. Mm. For example, you get angry, mm. then immediately you, rem you remember the guru. Oh, my guru told me I should, I should not be overpowered by the affliction. And if an affliction arises, I should um, uh, regret that and let go of it. I should apologize and so on. So um, we should always recognize the afflictions that arise um, throughout the day and night, all the time. Of course, as beginning practitioners, um, there is no way that we will never have any afflictions. We will always there will be always some transgression. But um, when that happens, it is important that we always remember the guru and that we remember the guru's <coughs> words. So of course it is um, always good to think of the guru, but it is most important, most beneficial to actually bring to mind, remember the, the words of the guru. So then um, visualize at your forehead a white arm, at your throat a red arm, at your heart a blue hung, and at your navel a green shree. Om ah Om Shri Tato Tiwala Shri Shri Tiwala 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 And so of these, uh, most importantly, focus on the, the Shri syllable at the navel. Of course, if you can visualize all the other syllables, that is good. Um, but if not, most important is though, to focus, visualize single-pointedly the Shri syllable at the navel. Ah, <laughs> 
So this is a, a Dorma empowerment. The empowerment is conferred with the Dorma. And so the Dorma has uh, four special qualities. The first one is uh, the Dorma represents the, the, the palace, the immeasurable palace of the deity. And so um, <coughs> then, um, so in, in a large sense, we, we, the deity, we say, pervades, is large and pervades the entire space, the outer universe. But also, um, um, on a small scale, um, there are countless um, millions and billions of deities, um, smaller than mustard seeds, which all are contained within the Dorma. So um, the uh, second meaning of the Dorma is we understand the Dorma to be the deity, so it also represents the deity. Third, the Dorma also is an offering. It is like a big hotel, like a guest house, where you have all the sense pleasures, the five sense pleasures, and there are many offering gods and goddesses, there are pools and inconceivable offerings there. It is like uh, the pure land of Deva Chen. And number four is once we have completed, accomplished the practice, the empowerment, then the Dharma also represents the city, the accomplishment. And so um, that today is represented, um, for example, by the, the money pills, the blessing pills that you will receive. And so um, what it represents is the love of the deity. Um, through the deity, whatever deity we actually practice, every deity has great love. Uh, so they represent precious bodhicitta. And wherever they are, bodhicitta pervades. So these blessing pills, these money pills, the dharma, and all the ritual ops, um, um, objects and so on, they all are pervaded by bodhicitta and <clears throat> are a skillful means to benefit samsaric sentient beings who grasp at a self, to purify their body, speech, and mind. There is, for example, the liberation by seeing or by touching or by tasting and so on. And for example, if we eat those blessing pills by, by liberation by, eat, by tasting, then they can um, generate bodhicitta in the minds of beings and self-grasping diminishes. So it is like um, a single medicine that cures a hundred illnesses. So the, the Dharma also represents the city, the accomplishment, and uh, to represent that later you will receive those blessing pills, the money blessing pills, which are very precious, and they also today represent the, the city, the accomplishment. And you should take a small grain of these pills every evening um, before you go to sleep, place it under your tongue, and then practice the Oma Hung Vata recitation as you fall asleep. And later, when you have habituated to this practice, you can only visualize the syllable Hung as you fall asleep. And also these um, blessing pills um, are very um, are beneficial um, and benefit you slowly. So they are said to purify the obscurations and negativities accumulated in many aeons. So they slowly um, bring some benefit. But sometimes the people's devotion is too strong and at the same time also their desire is too strong. And so then they want an immediate benefit. And so it doesn't happen immediately because we have accumulated obscurations 
since beginningless time in samsara. So it, we should only trust that they are beneficial and, um, and engage in practice. So these are the four uh, qualities of the Dharma. <laughs> So then, uh, for the visualization, um, think that visualize that in a space before you is the assembly of deities, and so here on the on the dorma you can see there's this this picture, this ugly picture on the dorma, and think that this this picture on top of the dorma is like a mirror, and um, in which the the deities abiding in space are reflected, and so then light rays radiate from these deities. So first the white light radiates and think that that this um, light pervades samsara and nirvana and all beings, all males become tenrisic and all females become tara. Bodhicitta arises in their mind and their bodies become the body of the deity, like a rainbow-like form of the deity. So you close your eyes and clearly visualize in this way. Also hold the, the picture that you have received in your hand and later when you are instructed to look at the image, look at the image and then again close your eyes and have this image appear in your mind. And so slowly if you repeat this, the image will um, begin to appear in your mind, approximately appear. And then you see uh, my mind is actually just like a mirror, anything can be reflected. This is what we call the mirror-like wisdom. And then you see that um, you, it, is your, it is your freedom, you have the, um, the power to create any deity in your mind. This is how you create the freedom or the, the power of your own mind. Um, that is when you understand that the deity is actually established within your own mind. So understanding that is to understand the meaning of the creation stage. You see that your own body is like a, an old pair of clothing and uh, when you practice the deity, the creation stage, these physical obscurations are purified and you become the pure form of the deity. Um, so that is if you continuously engage in the practice of the deity and eventually as a result you will never forget about the deity and, and in that way you really have obtained the empowerment of the creation stage. Um, so um, now um, you close your eyes and then later on again and again look at the image that you have received. <laughs> So now you can close your eyes and um, think that the light is radiating, so then later, again and again, you should look at the image. Mm -hmm. 
So, <clears throat> when having received this empowerment, it says we have purified the obscurations of our body, uh, having received the empowerment of the form. And so what are these obscurations of the body? It is that we, we think that I am this body, we identify with this body. And so because we think that this is who we are, for example, when you look into the mirror and you think you're old, you feel very sad. Um, or when you uh, feel very, you look in the mirror and you think you're very young, you're very prideful because you think this is who you are. You identify with your body. So the self-grasping is the grasping at the body of thinking I am this body. And then due to that, and because we, we grasp at the body, um, we think that this is who we are, we, um, <coughs> we experience um, fear um, on the basis of our six sense perceptions. We are afraid of hunger and thirst and heat and cold and various forms of pain and suffering. And then if we bring that fear with us, then later in the bardo, it will be even mm -hmm. worse because then we will, due to this grasping, this fixation to the reality of our fears and our afflictions, we will actually experience them. So that is the obscuration of the body. And so when we practice the pure form of the deity, we visualize the pure form of the deity, that purifies the grasping at the, the, at the material body, the true existence of this body. And we, receive <coughs> and we receive the blessings of the compassionate deity. And as a result, we realize the form of the deity, clearly appearing and yet empty. The blessings of the deity's form that is like a rainbow in the sky. So <clears throat> when we think of the deity's form, we think about the deity's qualities that are represented <coughs> by the form. We recollect <coughs> the pure qualities of the deity. And then when we um, practice the deity with a mind of bodhicitta, then later, the pure lens will just naturally manifest. So then later in the bardo, if we have habituated to the creation stage, 
um, and we had, have developed uh, trust into the qualities of the day team of uh, you know, omniscient wisdom, love, and the power to protect us. We will never forget about the deity. The deity's love will always be in our mind. And when the deity is always in your mind, then later, after you have died, you will naturally become the deity. And at that time, it is not even um, necessary to practice a separate poem. There is no need to be afraid um, if you have <coughs> developed such trust into the deity. Then you will by never forgetting about the deity, you will merge non-dually with the form of the deity um, after death. So <coughs> this is the great um, benefit of the creation stage, the purpose. And then also it says, as a result, you will accomplish the Nirmana Kaya. So um, ordinarily, you know, we, we see our outer body, our outer form, and we see that as this is me, my ordinary form. And <coughs> However, if um, we think about the deity, you bring the deity to mind, and you never forget about Chinrezig. You think that it is all what I think I am. Um, I am Chinrezig, so you never forget Chinrezig in your mind. Um, then, um, even though your outer body still looks like this ordinary samsaric body, within your mind, inside, you, you are the deity. So that is like the, the, the youthful, it's called the youthful waste body. That means the um, outer form might still be the samsaric ordinary body, but inside your mind you assume the, the form of the deity. <coughs> um, and so the, um, the, the Lord of the family of Chinrezig is Amitabha. So then we visualize that from Amitabha, Amitabha's throat, red light radiates, and brilliant like the sun, and pervading the three worlds and think that this red light dissolves into your throat. Then we um, we'll take a break, and in the meantime, we will play the um, the Mani mantra out loud. And so during this time, think that all the sounds have become the Mani mantra. So we take a 20-minute break. You can rest and drink tea, and also you can recite the uh, chant the Mani mantra, and think that all the sounds in the surrounding that you hear become the Mani mantra.
So before we have received the, the speech empowerment and that we have received from the Buddha Amitabha and the light radiated from Buddha Amitabha and now next when we come to the, the mind empowerment um, that is conferred by Hayagriva and from Hayagriva blue light radiates and it dissolves into the hung at your heart and think that as it dissolves uh, self-grasping diminishes and love and compassion arises in your mind and in the mind of all sentient beings. <coughs> So then we have received the, the mind empowerment and then when we see the nature of the mind and we realize that there's, it is only that there is a duality in, in bodies, there's different bodies, but within the mind there is no duality. The mind is like space and within space there is no duality. And realizing that all confusion <coughs> and grasping at the reality, at a concrete reality collapses and you perceive all that appears as unreal and arising but just like a wave on the water again subsiding. So when you receive the ultimate empowerment, dualistic grasping falls apart. And that is the actual realization of Mahamudra or Dzogchen, the ultimate truth. It is to realize the non-dual primordial wisdom. So whenever you realize that, you have, according to <coughs> what Milarepa had said, then you have obtained the ultimate empowerment. ただ、この愛しいもんじゃないですか。全部よ。全部よ。全部よ。全部よ。全部よ。全部よ。全部よ。全部よ。全部よ。全部よ。全部よ。全部よ。全部よ。全部よ。全部よ。全部よ。全部
so this is where the qualities of the five wisdoms arise so this mindfulness is like a single the single medicine so when bodhicitta arises also self-grasping diminishes um, for example when we practice according to the pratimoksha and then the bodhisattva vehicle we practice the six parameters and and so on but according to the vajrayana um, the uh, the five wisdoms we realize the five wisdoms um, by um, eliminating the five afflictions and from the quality of the of these um, five wisdoms all the activities of the buddhas appear <coughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, so, um, uh, the, having received the empowerment of body, speech, and mind, and then the, the enlightened qualities and activities of the Buddha appear. And so, all these qualities of the Buddha are actually complete within Buddha nature. And due to this, um, realizing this, then the activities become equal to the, um, the, the activities of all the Buddhas. So then this, this is the empowerment um, later of the activities and qualities. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Uh, so then, um, <coughs> so all the, um, the 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 blessings of the of the dormam and the pure day team dissolve into the nectar, and you will receive the nectar and you drink the nectar, and then think that this nectar pervades your body and blesses your channels and your elements, and having been blessed by the nectar, think that this generates undefiled great bliss. <coughs> Sedo 
<coughs> so it is um, undefiled bliss that is generated and so that is opposed to defiled bliss so the defiled bliss is the um, bliss that arises from various samsaric sense pleasures and that sort of bliss in the end turns into suffering so one <coughs> when one recognizes undefiled great bliss one recognizes that um, all of um, that um, is only a thought all suffering and so forth is a thought so there is no grasping at all and um, realizing that um, when there's no more grasp grasping one realizes dharmakaya which is the state of great bliss or ultimate <coughs> lasting unchanging bliss so um, it is said when um, there is no grasping at the reality of Everything that appears and exists, samsara and nirvana, you realize non-dual primordial wisdom. And that means you, you realize, you see all those appearances of samsara and nirvana just like a reflection in a mirror. You will not hold it to be true. So therefore the example, the symbol given is a mirror or a crystal, like here a crystal. So the crystal that are reflected, uh, the, the reflections which are reflected in the crystal are reflected in the crystal. So they come to the crystal and the crystal doesn't go out um, to, um, doesn't go out to those um, reflections. So um, it does not go around. So everything is reflected within that crystal. And so in a similar way, all of the phenomena in samsara and nirvana are a display of the basic nature of the mind. So also tomorrow we will hear more about that in the Dzogchen teachings. It, it is also related to the Tugal teachings or, or crossing over. And later in the Bardo text, we will ex go more into that um, explanation. So we keep it brief today. But um, in brief, it, what it represents, uh, this crystal, is that everything that appears is a reflection of the mind. In the 37 practices, also it says, appearances are one's own mind. From the beginning, mind's nature is free from the extremes of elaboration. So there is no grasping to the reality of any appearances. That is the essence of that, of, of that verse that perfectly describes the meaning. <laughs> Okay. So now we will meditate, you should meditate, um, have your back straight when you meditate and look at your mind and see that all appearances, all that arises is like a reflection in a mirror. So look at your mind and whatever thought arises, let it be and it will dissipate on its own like a wave on the water. So meditate, look at your mind, have your back straight and visualize single pointedly the syllable Shri at your navel. Hong 
So, um, it says here in this text, um, remain free from distraction, um, without distraction and without meditating. So that um, is actually um, the ultimate um, state of meditation that um, where there is no more meditation. So also in Dzogchen it is referred to the um, dissolution um, of the appearance of Dharma Tam. Uh, so um, that is when there is no distraction, you're always mindful. If you're always mindful, then there is no need to uh, actually separately meditate, nothing to meditate upon, apart from remaining undistracted. And so then ultimately, also there is no duality of someone who confers empowerment and someone who receives empowerment. So that is actually the ultimate empowerment when there is no duality between the, the one who confers and the one who receives the empowerment. Then um, it all has dissolved um, one into space <coughs> when there is no more grasping <coughs> in the mind. And so that um, this realizing the space like nature, that is the ultimate empowerment. in English please. Great compassionate one, please take me under your care, protect me, keep me close to you, care for me unwaveringly. Oh, 
So then think that um, a garland of like, red flowers enters into your crown and then it is descends to your navel and circles in the form of the mantra around the three syllable. Ninh <coughs> Tobacco的 so it says that after we have received the empowerment, then we um, add the Shri to the Omani Padme Hung, Omani Padme Hung Shri. Um, so before that, the, the six syllables, Omani Padme Hung, are the um, the antidotes, the seed syllables, the antidotes to the six realms of samsara um, or the six paramitas. And the Shri represents great compassion. So when we receive empowerment, we cultivate bodhicitta and then the practice is more powerful. Uh, if we do not cultivate bodhicitta or not receive the empowerment, then um, regarding the three syllable in the end, we can still add the three syllable. It doesn't make a difference, but the point of the three syllable is to show that the power of the practice is greater if we give rise to bodhicitta. Um, but we can, in either way, we can add or not add the three syllable. And so after we have received the empowerment, it is like um, a king has obtained his kingdom. Uh, and that is, we obtain this kingdom through bodhicitta. And, yeah. <clears throat> and then having obtained bodhicitta through the empowerment, the, this precious human life has really become meaningful. So then um, you must understand that your own mind of bodhicitta, love and compassion is indivisible from the great compassionate one of Alokiteshvara. So in this way, realize your own mind inseparable from the deity. And so all the, um, um, the mantras of all the deities are actually included within these six syllables. And so in the, in the end, uh, we will recite the summoning of good fortune. Uh, also, we will read the, the, 
taking a self-empowerment um, of that. So we will do the actual Zambala practice in Tibetan, and then the self-empowerment we read in English. And after that, you can come up to receive the empowerment, and after receiving the empowerment, you're free to leave and relax, and you should later circumambulate uh, the stupa. So the Samaya, in brief, is loving kindness and compassion. <coughs> so, um, <coughs> then you will also receive as a blessing a um, little pouch with blessing pills and these contain blessing pills from the Gar Monastery and also from Dharamsala from the various places around the world and you should take every evening before you go to sleep one tiny pill under your tongue and then also you will receive a, a Tara picture and this particular Tara picture is very special because this is the way in which Tara appeared to me directly and granted me blessings and um, touched me with her hand. So it is very, a very precious picture. And so and this I would like to offer to you because you, Madame, and friends have come here and, and that entailed and many hardships. And <coughs> so um, I want to um, offer something to you. And so when you take this picture of Tara, you can really see the picture, the image as the deity itself. The, de the, the image in the picture is actually an emanation, like a Nirmanakaya form of the deity. And so. <coughs> Um, all of this, um, also you can receive the um, smaller booklets like the Samantha Bhadra prayer or the prayer of Sukhavati and so on. Or for example the, uh, the seven um, line prayer to Tara for protection. Um, so take um, either any, any, any one of those books and if you have uh, more of them, some spare books, you can give them to others. If you give them to others, it is really an incredible merit <coughs> because Giving the Dharma is the greatest form of generosity. Um, so um, uh, we will, um, uh, and then in the end, we will, should also make our prayers for this world. Um, even if our intention of mind is not so vast, at least uh, we should bring to mind um, this, this world when we <coughs> recite the summoning of good fortune. Oh, yeah. ตาเจตนาก้าตาฟ้าก้าตาเอตาเจตนาทันเจตนาทันเจตนาทันเจตนาทันเจตนาทันเจตนาทันเจตนาทันเจตนาทันเจตนาทันเจตนาทันเจต
Yeah, yeah. 